Well, good day. Uh, this is Mark Morrissey from BMW Boxer Works in uh, Brisbane, Australia. And uh, this is a little movie that I'm making to go along with the development uh, of a new ignition system that we've come up with for uh, BMW air-cooled motorbikes. Uh, the name is Wedgetail. Uh, the business is Wedgetail Ignition Systems Australia. And I'm one of a team of people who developed this uh, particular ignition system uh, following a whole bunch of stuff that happened over a period of time where it just became obvious to me that the only way I was ever going to get something that I wanted uh, to work properly for the airhead bikes and the airhead communities that we service was to design and build it ourselves in Australia. And that's what we've done. I'm just going to turn the camera off now. Back with you now and I'll just take a minute or two to go through the whole rationale behind this ignition system. Um, for years and years and years when I had these bikes, and I've got five of them, uh, ignition timing uh, was always a problem. There was, um, it, they never really ran the way I felt they should. Uh, points ignitions are good. I know points well, I understand them well, and um, they're fine. Uh, but with modern technology, fuels and other things that are coming out now, and so many of our beautiful airhead bikes um, still on the road, I thought it was important that maybe uh, we look to the future. Uh, I came across an ignition system, I came across the guy that developed the ignition system when he was on holiday in Australia, and uh, I looked into that with him and I began selling them through an agent here in this country uh, who was a really good guy to deal with in terms of warranty, product backup, uh, availability, everything else. And over a period of about nine years, I sold a lot of those ignitions. They were a fully electronic advanced ignition system. And I always thought that that was the way these bikes should go. Um, I've looked into a lot of things over the years. Um, crank mounted systems. Um, the older style um, English systems that were around and were very good in their day. And one of the big problems with a lot of these is that they still use the advanced weights that came with the original system. Or... Uh, another kind of advanced weight to work and mechanical advances went out with high button boots to be honest and because of the design of the engines in these bikes and we've got plenty of them here to work on uh, you can't actually um, use a vacuum advance because both cylinders go out together and uh, so you're left with mechanical only and there is an issue with that where there's a point where the advanced weights are neither out nor in, uh, in sort of no man's land, and you get either too much or too little advance uh, at any one given time. This gets worse, by the way, as the pins and pivots and springs and other things in those mechanisms fail or wear. And to be more problematic, um, the cans on the later 80 model or 81 model forward uh, machines are actually designed off a Bosch distributor, and that base can was used in a lot of General Motors products uh, in the 80s and 90s uh, and it was originally a body of a distributor so it was a compromise to begin with it was a leap ahead from points though and made a lot of um, a lot of advances in its time although early on they did suffer from a lot of reliability issues um, and then came the innovation of being able to take one of the ignition control modules and put a processor of a sort in it and, and step the advance up electronically. And that's what I was using in my bikes and recommending to my customers. And then we began to have issues. We lost our, our East Coast distributor here and uh, that coincided with some issues here and there. I'm not going to mention any names ever, uh, but uh, it meant that I had trouble servicing uh, some of my customers when they had problems and that uh, the, the fix for that is coming, but still some way off. So about 18 months ago, I got together with a group of people. One of them has been running race engine building shops for many, many, many years across a lot of very famous names, Peter Brock and uh, Dick Johnson being amongst them. He's an airhead rider, and we had a bit of a play around on his dyno, probably the best part of 12 or 18 months ago now, and we started looking into how we might correct that issue. He went down one path and I went down another under his guidance. Uh, both of them 
using the same idea of not cutting into or not removing or not replacing any of the original equipment uh, uh, set up of the bike so using their harness and if anything maybe adding a pre-made harness into it and he went one way with his dual plug example of exactly the same bike as my uh, 440,000 kilometer bike that you're looking at here and between us uh, we worked along for a while we got involved with a guy who could write computer programs but also could design computer hardware named Langdon Green and he and I are in this situation together and with some other very good friends of ours uh, one of whom is an electrical engineer by the name of Les Fitzpatrick and Les was invaluable in solving some of the issues around electronics and what they do, what induction does, what causes heat ups, why. Uh, he had me riding around with oscilloscopes and, um, and very accurate thermometers wired up to the cores of the coils and all sorts of things for a period of time while we worked out what we were doing that was causing this or that or something else. That's a bit of a long preamble, but it's worthwhile knowing. Uh, why I decided to go down this track was having access to those people, we could build this without having to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in research and development. We were able to use practical experience uh, drawn from a lot of places and put it together into one very successful arrangement. 12 months later, we now have Wedgetails Ignitions Australia. Uh, it is a registered business. It has business numbers, uh, it has a patent coming for this particular process. However, it's not a real big problem for a patent because there's the, the actual module right there. It even has a pro forma sticker on it. It does not have the, the current production sticker. Um, I've done over 20,000 Ks testing this. But if anybody attempts to interrogate it using a, a laptop or something like that, uh, it begins its interrogation process by formatting itself. So if uh, someone were to get in there with a computer and start mucking about with it, uh, it will just simply wipe itself and there'll be nothing on there. So at the moment we have sufficient protection to proceed with this. And uh, I'm going to take a minute now and just explain to you what we actually did. This is a almost identical module to the factory module in its footprint. It is a very common thing. It's been used in many, 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 many applications since the 1980s. Uh, and is still readily available as a chassis today. The internals of it we had to have made and Langdon designed all that and up came a fully electronic, fully managed, really amazingly good ignition module uh, which uses the ignition can or a points plate only as a trigger item. Um, in fact it can be triggered just using points if you want. Uh, we have a much more sophisticated system than that in the pipe. But what does it do? Well, it replaces the entire electronic system of any description of any model that came on these bikes and of most of the models after it. So, um, after the production I should say, not after it. This is a fully microprocessor equipped uh, item. It has a proper uh, American made microprocessor similar to what's in your phone. It also has uh, a very very powerful coil driver set up in there which is its own firewall basically it has voltage stabilization in there it has a startup circuit which increases the coil charge times while the starter motor is cranking to give a hotter fatter spark for cold starting and also to help the bike run better while it's cold because that is uh, programmed so that it, the voltage decreases as the revs rise and if it happens to fall under its normal idle speed it will begin to exponentially uh, increase the voltage to the coils again. It has coil protection built into it so you can turn on the ignition and it'll all fire up uh, but it won't charge the coils until it gets its first hit uh, from the haul trigger uh, system and if you happen to stall the engine or leave it on after it's run out of fuel or something like that while you walk away for fuel if it doesn't get a hit from the trigger for four seconds it turns itself off. So in there is a lot of technology we used many, many chart points uh, for the, um, the system of advance and in doing that we averaged it out to get a much smoother, flatter curve, much better uh, interaction with the actual valve timing and the, and the construction and, and design of the engine. And we come up with a product which we think is probably the best 
available for this kind of application in the world. Uh, that's a big call, I know. Oh, and it's made in Australia, which to me is vitally important. It's a very important aspect of what we do. Um, but I'm just going to show you now. This bike is hooked up to Dr. Kildare. This is Dr. Kildare. He's a uh, fuel tank that sits up on a stand. We use this when we're tuning bikes and wanting to work and look for electrical issues while the bike's running. This, as I said, is my 440,000 kilometre uh, R100 GS PD Paralever. This is my shop in Australia. That's Paul working over there and Andrew working over there at his little workstation. And these are about half the bikes we have in here to work at at the moment. There's another shed behind me as well. So we are very busy, but I thought I'd take the time out to show you how this works. Now, I'm going to start the bike up. It's got fuel running to it. It hasn't been started today. I did this deliberately because I drove one of the cars home last night because I just wanted to see what would happen. Here it is in all its glory. Now that's courtesy of the cold start. You'll see now the revs have dropped down to about 750. This is a light flywheel bike and normally they won't idle at that speed. Down here, if you look, you can see it's self-diagnosing. The one on the left triggers uh, a blue uh, LED when the uh, hall trigger fires. The one on the right is for the coil drivers. So that will tell you, if you do have a fault, which one is the fault. One of the things that you get... is stone cold as you can tell from where the taco is it normally idles just over a thousand rpm when it's hot and smooth as silk so that's the system and we are just in the process of trying to uh, get it into production now I'll get that out of the road that just turned to one side and uh, we are currently producing them in Australia in hand assembled lots as pre-production items and we've sold maybe 60 or 70 of them so far to our local people. We've got a team of about 15 guys with um, everything from slash sixes through to dual plug GSs driving around on them, uh, giving me constant reports back on uh, what they do. And other than one malfunction with a brand new module on its very first attempt, um, we have not had a failure in what must now be heading towards 40,000 Ks in total testing um, of any description. So we're very pleased with it, very uh, happy with it. It runs well, it starts well, it idles well. But the most amazing thing about it, and I can't demonstrate this to you unfortunately, is because the timing curve that we've plotted in here uh, meshes so well with the with the valve timing and the the overall architecture of the engine it truly is one of the smoothest things that I've ever ridden in, a, in an air-cooled BMW it just spills up uh, like a like a, a rear stat on an electric motor um, there is no such thing as a ping because the timing is properly uh, controlled and it will not advance past where the engine revs are going uh, it just clears through the revs from 2,500 revs to the red line in one straight linear pull. It is not like having dual plugs or not like anything else I've ridden on an airhead. It just pulls seamlessly in a straight line in a linear fashion. Now I did swap my bike with the guy who has a twin plug engine on the same bike in very good order and it's a lovely motor. I've ridden it a number of times and I don't normally do this but I let the situation go where he rode my bike and I rode his and seriously uh, he was very very surprised to find that my single plug standard engine bike would actually out accelerate his in the mid range um, they are like that when they are timed correctly it, it changes everything about the bike that you think you know uh, it is just an absolute pleasure to ride it now we're proud of this we're very very proud of this we're going to sell it around the world we are taking up some distributors in various countries around the world. And part of the reason I made this video was to let people who are interested in buying it know that it is made in Australia, 
It is made from the heavy duty lifting things like the, like the microprocessors and the coil drivers are made in the US. Um, obviously we have to buy some parts from places like China, like the cases come from China because that's where you can get them from. Um, but they fit the architecture of the bike just exactly properly. They don't, they don't um, cause any kind of uh, conflict with the existing wiring of the bike. Sorry, I had to leave there for a second. They don't cause any conflict with the wiring or anything else. They just fit straight in place. Uh, for the early model bikes with the smaller type uh, module, we will have to make a bracket that will fit your module into the right place. But that's a relatively minor issue. Um, other than that, we sell it with a two-year warranty. Our distributors will be appointed one per country only. Now we're not going to get into a retail war with people with these things where they're being wholesaled around various distributors and are available like sand shoes at every, at every place that sells bits for bikes. There will be a main distributor, probably five of them in total, and that's where you'll have to buy your modules from. But from Australia, we will supply them with the hardware and the gear and we will look after the warranty side of it from Australia. So you will be buying a product that is Australian made, Australian backed, and we believe it is the best thing that has been made in ignition systems for BMW airheads ever. The other thing that we've done, which is really tricky, and I can't show you one at the moment because I put it in a bike to test the other day. Into this little box here, we can build two complete ignition control modules. And they are switchable. So we can have a switch here, which we have got on the one we've got to test, and a switch here. Because we can also, in the can we've designed and are having manufactured now, put two haul triggers. So if you want the top of the range and you want to travel all over the world, all you need is one of these things because you can diagnose it on the side of the road, you can flick in a second haul trigger if one dies, and you can flick over a second module if one dies. The way we will be selling them is in a modular system. So you'll get, if you have an existing electronic advanced type can which comes from companies that where they don't have advanced weights in them you can just buy the module or you can buy a module like that a single module with a single ignition can you can buy a module with twin processes switchable in it or you can buy a can with twin uh, haul triggers switchable in it or you can buy one system with both of those features in it so you can tailor the machine and the cost to your needs and to your budget if you want to see more, head over to Wedgetail Ignitions Australia on Facebook or look on my M's BMW Boxer Works page on Facebook. My website is being updated at the moment and will uh, contain all that information very, very soon. But at the moment, it is on Facebook. But just to send you on your way, now that the engine started and had a second or two to warm up. Now just watch what happens here. very sophisticated coil drivers and, and back EMF control system, these bikes all rev and run perfectly at idle. They hardly ever stumble or stutter. You can ride around a car park, just open the throttle gently and the bike will just accelerate gently. There's no hesitation, no stop. They just work beautifully. Bear in mind, of course, that what I'm talking about now is a bike that is functioning correctly not one that is old and tired and in, in need of an engine rebuild. These are not con rods in a bottle, but if you have a good average running bike in good serviceable condition, this ignition system will, I guarantee you, transform what you think your bike can do. Stay well, ride safely, until we meet again.